Hey guys, this is Mel, and I'm back to talk about Arrow, two episodes, episode 714, titled Brothers and Sisters, which premiered March 4, 2019, as well as episode 715, uh, titled Training Day, which premiered March 11, 2019, on the CW. I'm recording on March 12th, um, so it's less than 24 hours since I've seen um, 715, so huge spoiler alert, if you haven't seen the episodes already, please go do so first, and then come back and see what I have to say about the episodes. Otherwise, my other video reminders are up on screen, take a moment to remind yourself of those of those, I'm going to try to do this in 20 minutes, so let's start the clock, and let's begin with what happened in these two episodes. So, um, so the main plot reminder, I guess you could say for these two, would be that for 714, it's that Argus has its mission to, uh, take down Dante, and for 715, um, it would have to be, a team Arrow training with SCPD, Ergo training day, so there's that. Most shocking moments of the episode for 714, I think it had to be the fact that Emiko knows Dante. And not only that, he tells her that it's time for her to come home. Secondly, as well, the fact that someone had burned Diaz alive in his isolation cell. So he's supposedly dead at this point. But 715, for the shocking moment, would have to be the fact that Emiko knows about Laurel being Black Siren. Um, not the fact... So pretty much... The fact that she knows that means that she knows that she's from another Earth. So I'm kind of shocked as to how that's possible. So there's that. So the episode, so the, pretty much the main breakdowns for the storylines, uh, we'll get into that. So 714, again, picked up on three different ones. First one, de- be dealing with finding Dante. So that's the Argus mission, mission dealing with the Ghost Initiative. Oliver and Felicity are, are brought into it as well. Second one is Emiko's mission about um, trying to find a lead on who killed her mother. So there's that, and then the third one being flash forwards, which I'll get into um, in a moment. Um, For 7.15, the three um, storylines in the episode were the first one being Team Arrow trying to work with SCPD to find the uh, manufacturer of these poisonous um, biodegradable bullets, which leads them to James Midas. Second one deals with finding Diaz's killer, which is what Black Siren deals with. And um, she gets a clue from Bronze Tiger, which leads her to Emiko. So there's that. And the third one, again, deals with the flash forward, which I'll talk about in a little moment. Uh, so there's that. But the last scene of the episodes, for 714, it was Diaz burning, being burnt alive in his isolation cell back at Slabside. Initially, I thought it was Argus, but 715 kind of revealed that he was back in Slabside. And the last scene for 715 was William and Mia in... 2040 listening to felicity's message that leads them to the glades which now has this huge wall around it which is kind of commentary on what is happening in the world today especially with the u.s um so there's that um flashbacks there weren't any flashbacks in these two episodes so we'll move right into flash forwards of 2040 with uh, 714 we see both william and mia bonding over the fact that they are half siblings um through oliver we also Um, find out that Roy and uh, Dinah didn't know about Mia's existence. Apparently, uh, Elicity kept that from the team, but Connor Hawk knew about uh, Mia being Oliver's daughter because of his father, which was um, John Diggle being his adopted father, Um, So, which supports the fact that Diggle knew about Mia. So, there's that. Also, they find their new clue being uh, a message left on a mini cassette tape from the 80s. Uh, and Mia has no idea what it is, and William just finds amusement in that. But 7.15 uh, with the flash forward deals with William and Mia working together, trying to get a mini cassette player so that they can play the tape and hear uh, Felicity's message. Um, and we t- make note of the fact that William hasn't heard Felicity's voice in 20 years. Um so I guess the last time that they, I guess the last time William saw Oliver and Felicity was when young William had left to go live with his grandparents back in uh, 7, uh, 13. Um, so there's that, uh, which I'll talk about in a moment um, afterwards. Uh, so there's that. Uh, the Green Arrow update, I guess we could say for 714, is that we see Oliver trying to bond with em- Emiko and or Emiko and trying to help her find more clues about her mother's killer. Um we also see Aniko finding the arms dealer that sold the specialized weapon that was used to kill her mom. In 7.15, we see uh, Emiko only in her scene with Black Siren, and it is where Black Siren is accusing Emiko to, um, of killing Diaz in his slab side cell. Um, Emiko counters the fact that she knows that Laurel is Black Siren. Um, and so there's kind of a, a little standoff-ish moment between them there. Um, but uh, Black Siren also does make 
a timeline comment on the fact that Emiko has been in the city as the Green Arrow for seven months now. So there's that. Uh, moving on to main tidbits, though. Um, it's quite a few. Uh, but for 714, let's get on to that one first. We get, uh, well, I mentioned it already, but Diaz was burned alive in a cell. Um, second one is uh, Dinah isn't shown in the episode, because, but they do comment on the fact that she's in the hospital still recovering from her injuries by um, Stanley in 713. So there's that. Sec uh, third one is Felicity telling Black Siren first about her pregnancy before telling Oliver at the end of the episode. So there's that. Another one is the fact that despite his departure, Curtis had left behind um, an algorithm algorithm for Argus to use um, during their search for Dante. Um, and the last one, or not last one, because I just thought of one now, but also Diggo resigns. Apparently Diggo resigns from Argus so that Lila doesn't have to because he says that in doing so, he'll take the blame for bringing together the ghost initiative and she keeps her directorial position so that she can get behind who is the corrupt people inside Argus and higher up the chain. So there's that. Last tidbit that I just thought of was the fact that in this episode, Oliver tries and fails to get into contact with William. He leaves a lot of messages to the point that the, the voicemail is left um, full. Um, and this is after this is shortly after William has left to go live with his uh, grandparents in Central City. So Oliver has tried and failed to contact the son. And also in the f flash forwards, um, Oliver or William made a comment on the fact that after he left Oliver and Felicity to live with his grandparents, he never heard from them again. Um, and then he made the comp comment on the fact that, oh, he originally thought that maybe it was for his face safety, but then finding out that he has a sister that he never knew about made him feel like he got replaced. But so there's something or someone that is standing between those communications. I think it's the grandparents that maybe he's cutting all ties with Oliver without William knowing and then having William believe that Oliver just doesn't want anything to do with him, which leads to the 20 years of him not hearing Oliver or Felicity's voice. Um, so that's something there. But for 7.15 with their tidbits, let's go into that. We get Oliver and Felicity telling Diggle about the baby and asking him to keep it between them. They don't want to tell anybody else because not only of the danger right now, but also the fact that it's too early um, in the pregnancy to share. So there's that. We also hear Oliver and Felicity talk about baby names. Um, Felicity has always been fond of the name Lucas, while Oliver thought of the name Mia, which Felicity noted was short for Mora in honor of his mom. So there is that. We all know which one they pick. So there's that. Also, we find out that uh, Dinah has permanent nerve damage in, in her throat, which affects her canary cry. To the point that like she can't really use it without it feeling like knives dragging down her throat. So there's that. Uh, we also see the arrow bunker back and back and fully operational and not like that fully outgrown jungle that we saw in the future. Um, so the bunker hasn't been optional since Prometheus had blown it up, I believe. Or was it Caden Chase that Caden and James that blew, blew it up? I think it was Caden. I don't know. But it's been a while since we've been in that cave. So it's very fantastic to see them back in it again. We also see the uh, Team Arrow running as their own sanctioned uh, vigilante unit uh, that's separate from the SCPD, but they still get their badges. So there's that. Um, also, we see Mayor, or we hear about Mayor Pollard working on appealing the law against vigilantes. So that's going to take some time there. And also, we see Diggo encouraging Felicity about her latest uh, tech developments. Um, I don't know if it has to do with the security or the DNA tracker that he was talking about, but apparently some stuff was exceptional. Um, I'm definitely wondering if those developments had anything to do with the huge dramatic change in the future. Um, so there's that. But moving on to top favorite moments of the episode. Um, instead of top top favorite, I noted three for them but for 714 let's talk with start with that first i do like these fight scenes we got specifically with the ghost Ini initiative those are pretty cool um very intensive even though i i hated diaz it was great to see china white carrie cutter and um joe wilson aka kane wolfman um in the thick of it and showing their skill set um so that was pretty cool there another um favorite i had was the flash forward bonding between william and mia just them trying to get to know each other because this is the first not only did they this is the first time William is actually knowing about his sister but the fact that Mia is meeting her brother for the first time and actually trying to see similarities between the two of them and, and their parents it was very interesting to see the bonding there and, and then another favorite for the episode was the baby news uh, I really liked when we got to see 
um, Felicity telling Oliver the fact that she was pregnant and getting his reaction there. And then also, it was interesting to see Felicity telling Black Siren, and, or not telling her, I guess confirming, because Black Siren kind of made the comment suggesting that, well, are you pregnant or something? And then Felicity's like, well, like saying, like confirming that she was. And then getting that whole reaction there, and then Black Siren buying groceries for healthy food for uh, Felicity, which was pretty cool. Um, but it definitely uh, re reaffirms the friendship that's going on between Felicity and Miss Laurel, which I'm I'm liking Miss Laurel a lot better. Um, so there is that. Uh, for 7.15, though, for my favorite moments, uh, first one being um, Team Arrow doing things their way, especially when it gets to SCPD and trying to be incorporated. I love that whole training sequence where every member of Team Arrow just dominated the the SCPD recruits and showed that their skill sets are far more advanced than the regular cop recruit. I mean, no disrespect, but like, come on. I mean, it's, it's obvious. So there's that. Also, it was great to see the team back in the bunker again. It was also great to see um, where you got them going after the same people. The first set, you have them going by the SCPD rules. And then the second way, you have them going um, through their Team Arrow rules. And it was I really like the fact that when you see the two happening in the same episode, you see the huge difference. You can see, you see how efficient the Team Arrow way is in comparison to the SCPD rules. And it's just like, yes, it just further proves how much more um, proficient, inefficient that the team is um, doing things. I mean, it's five people versus a whole swat of people that uh, a whole swat of cops trying to do it. It's just like, I like the to, like the showcase of how Team Arrow works. So there's that. Another favorite of the episode was seeing um, Black Siren and Bron Bronze Tiger making a deal with each other and keeping their word. So Black Siren got uh, Bronze uh, Tiger's son to the jail so that he can have some one-on-one -on -one time with him, story time and stuff. And that was the one request he had. And then him follow through and telling her that it was someone in green leather that killed Diaz, but, it, but he knew it was not Oliver Queen. So it was just really great to see that type of team up there. I mean, I'm starting to... I'm starting to like Bronze Tiger the more and more we see him. So I'm hoping we get to see a little bit more of him. But his son is just so cute. So it, it was fun there. Um, another favorite I had of the episode was just William and Mia working together and how they both supply their own unique skill sets to each other and they complement each other that way. So it definitely shows like where one kind of takes after. Like It seemed like Mia takes after more of from Oliver and William kind of takes more after Felicity in a sense, um, which is kind of weird because our impression is that Mia grew up with Felicity without Oliver and William barely had any time with Oliver or Felicity. So it was just, but he knew who they were to the core. So it was just, it was interesting to see how they work together. And another favorite I had for the episode was when Oliver and Felicity told Diggle about the baby and his reaction to it and how they were talking about, well, if they're, doing this next step to make the city safer specifically for the child, then they had to do things different than what they had been doing previously. And it was just that great conversation between them, the excitement that they had about the baby coming. It was just, a, that was a favorite there. Moving into top peeved moments. I'm, I mean, total, I only had three between the two episodes. So we'll get into with 714. My peeve was the fact that Emiko or Amiko knows Dante. That pretty much ruins any perception perspective I have of her and making me doubt which side she's truly on. Is she here for ulterior motives? Is she even Oliver's sister? And maybe she's not and she just killed his real half-sister and took her place or something? Like, I don't know. But then I think about, well, the blood sample kind of proved that she is actually his sister. But then it makes me wonder, did she... Did she get stuck in with Dante and then Dante already knew that she was a queen and hoped to later use that to his advantage later on? Like, I don't know. So I'm peeved by how many doubts this interaction caused me. So there's that. For 7.15, um, I, I was really annoyed by uh, how the SCPD was pretty much restricting what Team Arrow could do. They were saying, you have to follow the rules. It's like, but that also put, a, put like, that really... Um, What's the word? That really hindered what they were capable of. I mean, Felicity wasn't able to hack her way through every system because she had to do it through legal channels, as well as the fact that she was doing it on a dinosaur of a system, as she says, which 
had it crashing before she was able to track the the perpetrators getting away. So that's one thing there. The fact that um, Oliver, Renee, and Diggle couldn't use their regular weapons was another thing because they're already trained with their weapons. They're proficient in those weapons, and yet you're telling them to no, swap them out for the the generic um, weapons that this SCPD uses. That also hinders, like, yeah, they can use those weapons, but they're not what they're, they're special in. So, like, instead of Oliver with a bow, which he's, like, amazing at, he, you now have him with a gun. I mean, he's used a gun before, but, like, you know what I mean? So it's just, like, it was, like, it's like instead of hiring them to do what they are trained and specialized in doing, you're just hiring them and then telling them no. You, it's like pretty much saying like you're going to hire someone. Who, that's, like saying so, that's like saying that you're going to hire someone who has the management background and yet forcing them into an entry-level associate position. And it's like, well, they have all the skill set to do everything else, but yet you are forcing them to... A lower level position where as if like all the other associates at that level who don't have the training the the manager trained one does like if that makes sense so it's just really frustrating to see those type of restraints put on team arrow and to see their struggles because like they've been through so much to get to the level of um skill that they have and to not have it put to use was just irresponsible i guess So there's that. Another piece is the fact that uh, we had Emiko threatening Black Siren. And it's like, right when I'm trying to, right when I'm getting used to liking Black Siren, you have this girl who just like walked in and kind of like put a blip in their radar and is like threatening. It's like, no, I mean, like you walked into a prison and you killed a guy. Emiko probably killed Diaz because Dante told her to. So it's like, that has me also questioning the fact that, well, is Miko a mercenary then? Is she... A gun for hire then or is that what she was before she just before her mother was killed or something it's just like no and then also the question of like well how do they both know each other did i'll get to that later but that was a whole peeve right there that whole scene where it's like black siren as the da is trying to get down to like well who killed diaz and yet miko's like well no one's gonna believe you and it's like bitch go it's like i don't need you here all of her sister are not get the hell out but yeah, there's that. But moving on to random questions very quickly. I do have a few for each uh, episode. So let's start with 714 in the fact that uh, first one, based on the flash forward, only Oliver and Diggle knew about Mia. So how did Felicity keep up appearances throughout her preg- pregnancy? Because Roy didn't know, Dinah didn't know. Um, therefore, assuming Renee that didn't know. Um, so I'm wondering why that is. Second question, is Connor Hawk the biological son of Diggle, or is he the adopted one? Because in this episode specifically, Connor said that he was adopted in this episode. Um, While in the Legends, um, in the Legends episode back in season one, I think it's 106, Connor Hawk was introduced as John Diggle Jr. So I'm wondering which one it is. Also, because I'm recording after um, 7.15, when I went to go watch the promo for 7.16, a lot of the comments there kept on saying that Connor Hawk could actually be bronze tiger son um which we just met in 715 so um so then that's why he was adopted um but then everyone's question well why would he be renamed john diggle jr if he was adopted right so it's just i'm wondering which is is he actually um john diggle jr we have known as diggle's son that we see grow up with lila and stuff is actually him or is he actually adopted and he's bronze actually adopted or is he bronze tiger's kid that's been adopted or does diggle and lila have a second son that that they named connor hawk or something like what's the deal there um so there's that another question if diaz was back at slab side when he died did he still have the argus bomb inside of his head did they or i mean if it was still there could they have detected when he died or did they deactivate it and that's why they didn't know that he was dead because he was just process as a slap side prisoner instead of being in argus custody i have no idea because then i'm wondering if he still had the bomb in his head does that mean if he got burned and killed alive did the bomb go off at all which it obviously didn't um but there's questionable things there um but he was confirmed to be dead in 
715, which leads to those questions, which is, first, if Dinah can't use her canary cry anymore due to the damage, nerve damage, then why can't she use the device that Cisco had created for the original Laurel when she first became Black Canary in Season 3, Season 4? I mean, she wasn't a metahuman, and he created the device that allowed for her to have the canary cry. So if Dinah can't use her actual canary cry anymore, then why not use the artificial one? So there's that question there. Um, another question was, what are the chances that the threat between Emiko and Black Siren um, trickles down between Oliver and Felicity having to pick sides? With it, Oliver kind of going with his sister's side and then Felicity going with her f- new friendship with Black Siren because now Emiko put the threat of the fact, well, well who's, who, who's going to believe you type of thing? So I'm hoping it doesn't come to that, but for a very bad feeling that it might. So there's a timer there. Uh, another question is, will we see Bronze Tiger free from Slab Slide and possibly working with Team Arrow? We do get the the hint of the, that Laurel is trying to work around his ironclad sentencing. Um, so he's, his Oliver's promise to him hasn't been swept under the rug and not forgo- and forgotten. So we see that she's trying her best to uphold that promise he made. So that was pretty good there. Um, and I really hope we do see him uh, out of slab side, possibly working with Team Arrow as, a, as an asset of some sort, definitely turning a new leaf, or even working with Argus to help take down whatever corrupt beings are part of it. So there's that. And last question. Did Team Arrow tell Black Siren about Emiko being Oliver's half-sister, or did she find that all through research? Because she was listing some things that would have been public knowledge, essentially. Or did she use some Earth 2 knowledge to help figure out that it could be Oliver's other half-sister? Plus, that also begs the question of, like, how the hell does Emiko know that this Laurel is Black Siren, while everybody, while the rest of the world believes that she is the Laurel Lance that used to be the Black Canary? So, there's that question there. But moving on to predictions very quickly. So, based off the promo for 716, we see Oliver and Felicity in a cabin in the woods welcoming their baby, um, and before, like, they get attacked or something, but we also get it accompanied with Mia's voiceover about how the fact that she had to be hidden from the world because she was the daughter of the Green Arrow. Now, if that's the case, then I can understand why Mia has this hatred towards vigilantes because because of the fact that if she had to stay hidden from the world because she was the daughter of a vigilante, maybe she might feel resentment over the fact that because of that title, she couldn't live a normal life. Maybe, I don't know. But also this has to be questioned. Now, if Mia's birth is actually featured in 716, which is supposed to be heavily focused on um, 2040, so this could just be a, a flashback memory for Mia. But anyways, if her birth is actually featured in the episode, then does that mean we won't see it in season eight? Because if my calculations are correct, Felicity's due date could happen during the hiatus between season seven and season eight. Because Felicity would have gotten pregnant in December, January when Oliver got released. And she didn't find out she was pregnant until February. And so Arrow has the habit of still maintaining the flow of time, even if it's on hiatus breaks. Um, Her due date would be roughly August, September, October, maybe, depending when the conception was. Which, since Arrow does have a tendency of coming back with October premieres, I'm wondering, are we going to come back in season 8 with the um with Mia already here so that would also maybe under maybe make sense as to why we are seeing the birth of her happening in this type of flashback which so that's a question to ponder there but for the synopsis for 716 we have Mia and William venturing into the glades on a dangerous mission there they run into Dinah Roy and um Zoe who deliver some devastating news the flash forward share highlights from Mia's childhood from Felicity, which I think that's what we're going to get with the, the whole birth scene thing. But also because this episode is titled Star City 2040, it is rumored that the whole episode is set in 2040. So that's something there. Maybe we'll learn a little. I hope we learn enough to know like what's going on or maybe what caused the shift of shift to have the future be that way. But then I'm also wondering, well, how much of it would be too much of us knowing without giving away what's happening in 2019. Um, So there's that. Also, some news, guys. It was uh, revealed on March 6, 2019. Um, It was announced that season eight of Arrow will be its final season with only 10 episodes. Um, 
for it instead of the full 22 23 we've gotten previously um so that's gonna put the the series finale shortly after the um crossover event with crisis on infinite earths uh, which i've been reading around or i've scoping out around kind of bit with this if with this news, it kind of has people believing a lot more that Oliver is going to die in the crossover event because of what he could have may or may not have made a deal with the Monitor in the um, Elseworlds crossovers. Um, so <laughs> everyone's on edge about it. But I am I really don't know how to feel about this news. Like on the one hand, to be told now that there's only going to be 10 episodes, they could do a lot in those 10 episodes. And if they already know that like that's going to be the end of it, they could do anything goes then really because um they could bring a lot of people back or they could set up a lot of they would have to tie up a lot of loose ends or they might even set up some things that could be later um investigated in the spinoff shows that we have they also have to keep in mind that what they do would have to trickle or not trickle down into legends supergirl or um, the flash um so that's going to be crazy there um, also, this is kind of reminds me of when the Vampire Diaries um, ended. They revealed that not only was season eight going to be its final one, but the fact that it was going to be a shortened, uh, shortened run of the season. So um, I'm not completely foreign to the idea of being told the right beforehand that it's going to be the final season. But it just um, it definitely gets you ready, and those ten episodes are really going to tee up the fact that this is the end, this is the end, this is the end. And then the fact that at least we have Legends and The Flash and Supergirl kind of to have those crossover moments means that maybe we might see characters come back and like kind of continue forward in that. Uh, I mean, if anything, there I would love to have, I could definitely see Felicity and um, uh, Diggle going to The Flash maybe and kind of joining up there afterwards because we do see Argus mentioned a bunch of times over there. Um, I could see uh, a few people maybe going to legends to do the same thing um so it's definitely gonna take some getting used to um but that's about it guys what do you guys think of these two episodes what do you guys like about it what do you think will happen next let me know in the comments down below love to hear your own thoughts theories and predictions about what you think will happen next also don't forget to like this video subscribe to my channel and check out my other videos if you haven't done so already if you want check out my tumblr page link for that is down below I read blog promos web clips quotes gifs synopsis news all the good stuff all find one place go check that out i am behind I know I only do promos, synopses, and web clips. Um, GIFs have been kind of on the back burner because um, I'm going to sit down one day and just go through the search bar and search just GIFs for specific episodes and hopefully get back into that. But for all the other stuff, you should be able to find it um, on Tumblr. Also, WordPress account link for that is down below. Anything I post online is connected to WordPress. It's a work in progress, but it's more detailed, so please keep that in mind as well. Um, so that's about it, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for your patience. I still also want to hear what your thoughts are about the news about Season 8. So please comment down below about that. Um, but yeah, uh, I hope you come back um, in two weeks because I am going to double up again um, because then there's another a week hiatus um, after um, 7.17. So I might as well do 17, uh, 16 and 17 together. Um, so come back in two weeks to see what I have to say about that. But until then, guys, this is Mel. Wish you all a great day, great week, everywhere. Bye for now.